Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books. And little Pee, Pee wanted to be in the video today too, didn't you bud? Aww. He says, I'm feeling especially good today, Daddy. So anyway, let's get right into this video, shall we? Peace! Okay, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I did a video on my five worst books of 2017. And I don't know if I was just like really blessed this year or what, but there were so many good books that I read this year that when I was going through them, I was like, these books were good. And I had something like 25 and I narrowed it down to 15. This one piece of hair always wants to stick out. I narrowed it down to 15. So I have 15 of my favorite books. Da -da 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 -da. Now, I'm gonna try to list them below if I can, if I have time. Sometimes I'm like running out the door and I'm like, okay, I just do the best I can. So, um, you either can write them down, I talk awfully fast, I know that, but I may list them below in order from, well, see the thing is, but then you won't watch my video, you'll just go read the things, and that's not very nice, is it? You should have to watch my video. So maybe uh, you just need to take notes. Pause the video, I'll let you go get a pen and paper, da 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 I like books, I like books, I like books today. So, okay, did you get your pen and paper? All right, let's get right into this. Reigning in at number 15 of the best books, of 2015, 2015, 2017, God, getting old, is The Gilded Razor by Sam Lansky. I really enjoyed reading this book. I read this book on our way back from uh, Miami. I finished the whole thing like in the airport because we were stuck there for an extra long time. And um, it is a addiction memoir. But what's interesting about this one is it is about a um, young gay man and it is about when he was like in high school and, into, and like into like 18, 19. I don't know how old he was when he got sober and I don't know if he actively works a recovery program, but it was a mix between drug and alcohol addiction and sex addiction. And it was very interesting. I've never read anything like it before and I've read like every addiction memoir out there. So Sam Lansky was actually uh, like the editor of pop culture for time for a while. He's a really fun guy to follow on like Instagram and Twitter and stuff. Like. He's friends with all the stars, like Taylor Swift and all those people. So you guys should go check him out. The Gilded Razor by Sam Lansky. Somebody actually just sent me a physical copy of it, too. And I'm so happy. Um, my husband really wants to read it. It's a great book. Very, very, very dark, though, I will tell you. Okay. Reigning in at number 14 is Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker. So this is one of those missing girl books, missing people's books. And you guys know I love those, right? But this is a twist. So what it's about is that two sisters go missing and then several years later, they one of them comes back. And it's what happened to the other sister. I'm telling you right now, and so many people were like, no, the book was stupid. I, I had my best friend read it. And Tanya was like, oh my God, the book was so good. I was floored by the ending. I am somebody that usually can see an ending like in a mystery a mile away. I did not see this coming, okay? And it was like this, like there was like an unveiling of the mystery and then another one and then like another one. It was like, it just kept on getting bigger and bigger and bigger at the end. Do not skim ahead. Do not ask anybody what they thought about this book. Just read it. Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker. It's a great mystery. The cover looks like a young adult novel, but I wouldn't call it a young adult novel. Okay, um, number 13. Into the Water by Paula Hawkins, and this is another missing persons uh, book, and it's about how this woman, her son was like, there was this horrible storm, and he was at the school, and then he was gone, and they don't know where he's, go he's gone to, and then several years go by, and he comes back. And the story is super interesting. She is the one that wrote Girl on the Train, if you guys don't know who Paula Hawkins is. A lot of people didn't like this one, but I think the problem is, you know, it's like when you write a bestseller like Girl on the Train, everything that you write going forward is going to be compared to this. And I really thought she did a fantastic job. It's so completely different. It has a lot to do with witches and things. I thought it was very interesting and a lot darker than Girl on the Train. I liked it a lot. Um... Okay, number 12, Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. And, you know, like on any other list, this would probably rank a lot higher. I was super impacted by this book. It reminded me a lot of my relationship with my mother. If you haven't read it, I don't want to give it away to you guys of what it's about. But I had no idea going into it what the book was about. And thank God nobody ruined it for me in the comment sections of the book. Um, so I went into it. Just really thinking it was me, this imaginative book like James and the Giant Peach. I didn't really understand why so many people were like, this is such a fantastic book. 
this is such a fantastic book. And I really think, like another one that's going to rank in later um, at number four, I really think this is a book that everybody should read. It, it doesn't just belong on my best of list. I mean, this is a book that everybody should read. Okay, number 11 is At the Edge of the Universe by Sean David Hutchinson. And, uh... I mean, Sean David Hutchinson is one of my all-time favorite authors. The thing is, and this is why it ranks at number 11 and not at, like, number 2, okay, is that We Are the Ants, like, changed me. Like, it impacted how I thought. Like, it was, I think, in my top three favorite books of last year or the year before, whenever it came out. At the Edge of the Universe was good. It was very depressing. It was very sad. Um, I didn't love the ending, I have to be honest with you. But... I didn't disagree with it. I thought it worked, if that makes sense. It's just not what I would have liked. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, maybe I do. Like, I struggle so hard. And then I don't like to reread books because I don't want to go, well, I changed my mind. Do you know what I mean? I just like to see what the next book is that David, uh, Sean David Hutchinson has come out. But listen, they're all good. He's a fantastic writer. He is a fantastic storyteller. The, the, the fact that he is not more well-known on the level of, like, John Green, you know what I mean? And, like, Rainbow Rowell. It just, it amazes me. I mean, the man is so much better than that and, like, belongs to, like, be up there. His creativity, his writing style, he is just, hands down, one of the most fantastic young adult writers that we have out there, and I love everything that he puts out. Okay, uh, that was, let's see, number 11. Number 10, If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Rousseau. And this is a book about a transgender teenager, and um, it's about how she goes and lives with her dad and, like, being in this town where nobody knows that she's transgender. It was a really, really important novel, okay? And I, I can't stress that enough, and especially because it was written by somebody that was trans. And I do think that's important. I'm sorry, but I do. Um, and I think that we need to have diverse stories told by diverse people and diverse, vo diverse voices. I think it's really important. And um, not that I think that it couldn't be written by somebody that's not trans. I'm just saying that I also think we need to listen to those voices um, and from their perspectives to educate us. I was just... The story... The, here's the thing, is that the story is not, like, so astronomical. It just isn't. The story is rather simple, but when you step back and you watch what, and you look at what it's really about, you realize how important it really is in the grand scheme of things, right? And the fact that Meredith Rousseau keeps it so simple, okay, that it's really no more about than this girl moving to another town with her father going to school, but then nobody knows, right? Like, that's what's so fantastic about it. You feel like you're living this girl's story as you read it. Honest to God, you really do. It's so well done. Um, and I don't know that I even really knew how well done it was until I was done with it, if that makes sense. I feel like I'm on the edge of a sneeze. Do you ever feel like that? I feel like I'm about to sneeze. So if I do, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, what number was that? Ten? Ten? Okay, number nine, reigning in at number nine is Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy. I was so mad this book. Here, let me just tell you, when I was going through this, I usually go like 15, 14, 13, and up. I went like one. I knew what number one was going to be. Y'all know what it's going to be. You all know what my favorite book of 2017 is, right? We have to wait there and get there. But like two, three, four, five kind of surprised me, and I think they'll surprise you too. Um, and then like Ramona Blue was so far down the list because I was like, I, my top ten... Da, 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 top 10. I've read so many good books. I mean, you know, this year and I like half the books I thought were really good don't even make the list. So Ramona Blue is fantastic. I feel like I've talked enough about it in a lot of videos. You know, it deals with sexuality. It deals with, you know, like economical background. It deals with diversity. I, I think it's just so well done because with all of that, what it really is, is just a story of a girl. Like, you know, and the trials and tribulations that she goes through. It's a coming of age story and it's fantastic. And Ramona Blue is just She's such an endearing character. And here's the thing. The way that Julie, uh, uh, Julie Murphy wrote uh, Willow Dean, Dumplin', which you guys know how much I love Dumplin'. Um, oh, my God. They're making that into, the mo into a movie. If I could just get even, like, a role carrying scripts to people, I would die. But anyway, the way that she wrote Willow Dean is kind of a bitch sometimes because she hated, like, she hated how people treated her. Like, Ramona Blue is, like, the opposite of that. And so what I love by that is that you see that Julie Murphy is able to write just such drastic characters. You know, when I think of Willow Dean's best friend in Dumplin', and then I think of the characters, you know, I don't want to ruin this for you, and Ramona Blue, like, her best friend, and, like, all, it's just, Ramona, or Julie Murphy writes characters like nobody's business, okay? Now, 
A lot of writers can write stories, they can write plots, they can write action, but they can't write a character to save their life. Julie Murphy gets people, and that's important. Like, that is really important to telling a story. Okay, number eight, where's my number eight? Is Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. I seriously, when I was looking at this list, I was like, did it really end up that low on your list? I mean, it's not low, but out of all of the 70 books I read this year, number 10. Um, so here's the thing. I think that Colson Whitehead's Underground Railroad is one of the most important books that came out of 2017, if not one of the two most important books, the other one being my number one book. Um, I think that it needs to be read in schools. I think that it needs to be read in all schools. You know, this new thing that we have going on in our country right now of banning books, I'm not really sure what that's about, but it scares me and it makes me disheartened about the direction that our country is going in. And I, I, I don't really understand what that's about right now. Like, are we not past that? It's 2017. And if we live in an area where they are banning books, we need to fight that. We need to fight the good fight and make that our mission. Uh, Underground Railroad is being banned in schools, and that's a problem. Why do we not want this narrative told? You know, like, even if it's fictionalized to some level, is, you know, white privileged history not, is it not fictionalized? I mean, let's be for real, okay? So anyway, you know, I think it's such a fantastic book. I think it's such an important story, um, and I want everybody to read it. I want everybody to read it. That being said, it was a little slow in parts for me. So as a, as a read... Like, I'm looking at this really as, like, books that I just was like, oh, my God, I want everybody to read this because it was so great. Yes, it was intellectual. It was important. It was profound. But it wasn't like I was calling everybody to tell them to read it. I want everybody to read it because they need to be educated about it. But other than that, no. Okay, number seven. Best Friends, Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Hilarious. Fantastic. Pop culture references like nobody's business. I could not believe how fantastic this book was. Everybody, go read it. I'm speeding up here because this is getting long. Okay. Number six, Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. I can't believe this didn't end up like number three on my list. I really can't. But I loved it. I loved it nonetheless. And she's from Indianapolis where I live. Um, you know, it took me 100 pages to get into it. I wish, if you're going to read it, here's the thing. Sit down and commit two days to it and just read it in two days. Because that is how I believe it's supposed to be read. It's not one of those books you like read a page or two over a month. It just isn't. Like, you need to read it, like, quick because it happens quick and you'll get it quick. Like, once I started picking up the pace and I read it, because I read it for Booktubeathon, I, like, loved it. I was like, oh, my God, this is fantastic. Like, this is such a great story. And Francesca Zappia knows people. She gets people. She understands how to write a character, and I love that. Um, number five, All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Steve Otter. Um... Now, this might not be my favorite book of the year, but I will say this. This is the most beautifully written book that I read this year, period, hands down. Um, I was re it really wasn't what I was expecting at all, and it's about, you know, this town where they, like, have miracles and things like that, and um, I don't want to say too much about it. I've talked about it. Go back and look at my reviews. It's fantastic. It is one of the most fantastic. Well, obviously, it's on my top ten. It's top five. It's top five. What more do you want? But it's so beautifully written. I mean, so beautiful and funny and so funny, too. It's written like a telenovela. I love it. Number four is Wonder by R.J. Palacio. And I don't think I even need to discuss that one at all. I think we all know how amazing that book is. And if you're a booktuber like I am or a book lover or a book viewer and you haven't read that book like I hadn't, go out and read it tomorrow. I mean, it is that important. It is it is a book that will change you on so many levels. It changed me on so many levels. It made me look at the world in a completely different way and in a very simple way. And I'm, I'm thankful for that book. Number three, The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. Um, I, think when, and I did not want to read that book. I did not want to read that book, number one. Number two, I didn't know what to expect from it. And number three, I like was floored, okay? That book was so well done. The characters were so beautifully written. The interactions were so amazing. I absolutely got goosebumps reading parts of it. I mean, it was fantastic. And I love Simon vs. Homeo Sapien Agenda. I cannot wait to see the movie. Love Simon. I can't wait to see what else she has coming out. Becky Albertalli is a force to be reckoned with in the literary world. She is fantastic. And I think she should write an adult book. I think she should. Okay. Number two. This is going to surprise you guys. 
But this is the only book, I mean, out of every book that I read this entire year, hands down, this is literally the only book that I could not put down, and that is B Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. We were in Mexico, I brought one book, because I always bring two or three, and I never read them, right? And I sat down, and I read this book in two and a half days. I could not get enough of this book. Big Little, Ri Little, Big Little Lies, oh, fantastic. I bought all of her books, and in 2018, I'm reading all of her books, because... She is incredible. She is such a storyteller. I mean, she weaves a story like nobody's business. The miniseries on HBO, it's okay, but we'll read the books first if you're going to, because you're not going to want to read them afterwards. And apparently they're coming out with season two. She weaves a story together. Like, you have no idea what direction it's going in. That none whatsoever. I And, oh my God, like, you fall in love with these people. Like, she's so good. That's number two. And, of course, number one is... The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. The most fantastic book that came out of 2017. It was the most important book that came out of 2017. I don't care if you are five years old. I don't care if you're 500 years old, okay? Everybody needs to read The Hate You Give. If you read one book going into 2018 that you haven't already read, read The Hate You Give. It is important. We need to be educated on this. We need to just, we need to have this discussion continue to go. It's important, okay? This is the most important book, and it is done in such an important way, and it is so beautifully written, and, this, and the characters are just so amazing, and they're so relatable, and I, I just can't say enough. If I could meet Angie Thomas, the writer, and I could say one thing to her, I would look her deep in within her eyes and her soul, and I would say, thank you for writing this book. It profoundly, profoundly changed me. So those are the top 15 of Peter Likes books. For 2017. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, put below what you think were the best books of 2017 or if you totally disagree with me and think some of the books are crap. Let me know that too. I would love to know. And um, I think tomorrow I'm going to do like a send out of 2017 on Peter, like all the things that happened. On, I don't know. What would that be even? <laughs> but you'll have to wait till tomorrow and see. So I love you guys and I will see you later. Bye.